Hello, everyone. Welcome to Career Friday with the Career Readiness Office. This is our final Career Friday of the school year. We are so excited to have you with us. We will be getting started in a few moments. So if you are joining us from around the city, we would love for you to introduce yourselves in the chat. Shout out your schools. I am Barbara. I am the host for this final tour through some exciting careers and how you can access them through city schools, their readiness programs. I am actually from the Midwest. So I grew up all around farms. So anytime we get to talk about growing plants and taking care of animals, I am about it. So if you're just joining us, we're gonna wait a couple of minutes. I'm Barbara, part of the career readiness team. And we're excited to have you here for Career Ready Friday, agricultural, agriculture and natural resources management. So if you haven't introduced yourselves in the chat, please shout out your school, your organization. We'd love to know who's in the room with us today. We'll get started at 9.05, just a couple more minutes. Any of you guys out there have gardens or have animals that you take care of and you want to also shout those out? I am growing some rhubarb and strawberries in my garden. I'm growing some okra and tomatoes in my garden. I grew my okra from seeds last year, last year's seed pods. Again, welcome. We'll get started here in just a moment. You can shout out your school. We've got Mount Washington in the house. Welcome, Mount Washington. If anyone else is here with us, we're happy to shout you out. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome once again to our final Career Ready Friday of the year. We went through 10 clusters in 10 months. We were all over the place and we get to end outside, which is the best way to end as we're moving into summer. Hopefully you'll be able to spend a lot of that outside maybe in some shade, maybe in a pool to keep yourselves cool. Once again, I'm Barbara. I'm part of the career, ready, uh, career readiness team. I'm part of the work-based learning team. This actually was put together by Albert Phillips and Shanita Graves, who helped to manage this particular program. And we're just gonna go over the norms and what you can expect today. And then we get to go out into the field and see all of the really exciting ways that our schools and our young people are engaging with agriculture and natural resource management. Just some reminders here with us today. We want you to be present and be curious. So that means asking lots of questions. We'd invite you to ask those in the chat just so that we can stay on top of them. And so it's not a distraction to anybody else. So make sure you're using the chat in that thoughtful way. And please stay on mute unless you are invited to come off of mute. We are recording this, we share it out. And so we just wanna make sure that it's easy for people to hear and uh, to get their questions answered. So there are two parts today. I believe we had a third part, but we are going to be expanding these two very exciting parts. The first part is, um, part one is an agricultural classroom tour. And so um, that is going to show you the ways that if you get excited about this, there are schools and programs that you could, could choose 
in middle or high school that would allow you to do this to follow your passions. And then part two, we're going to actually get a tour of a local farm, Great Kids Farm. And um, that will show you all the ways that our Career Friday, our, our Career Readiness team gets you out into the field and actually learning in the industries that you are excited to participate in and jobs you're interested in exploring. I think we also have a note catcher that was sent out. So that's just an optional assignment for students. If you um, teachers, you can go back to the email that you received or somebody may have shared that in the chat. And um, that is an optional assignment to help our students reflect as they are going through this experience. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over, I believe to Shanita to tell us a little bit about these pathways and what we can expect to learn or what students can expect to learn if they're parts of these programs. Thank you so much, Barb. That was such a great introduction. Hi everybody, my name is Shanita Graves. I am the CTE manager for agriculture here in Baltimore City Schools. And um, it's my pleasure to share with you all today Agriculture, as Barb already said, is about caring for plants and animals. So we all like to eat, right? We all love to eat fruits and veggies and all types of things. Um, and some animals we eat and some animals we care for. And so agriculture teaches us how the choices that we make helps us to do that in sustainable and clean ways for our environment. Um, Agriculture is more than just being a farmer. A lot of times we think of agriculture and we only think of farmers. So it's actually a really varied field um, that includes like business planning, financing, risk management, productivity, um, reducing costs, having advances in science and technology, especially in areas that have like droughts and things of that nature um, or other things that would hinder those populations from being able to productively make enough food for their society. We can actually use science and technology to overcome some of those issues. Um, we use biotechnology and just a wealth of other things to help make sure that we're able to sustain ourselves and make sure that we have a balanced source of food, um, and to make sure that we're kind of keeping the world safe. You know, I don't know if you've heard about the bee population diminishing, but, you know, ag focuses on making sure that we can keep that bee population high because the bees are really kind of what helps populate the plants that we eat and the flowers that we use and make that wonderful honey that we like to put on our food. So, um, there's a number of different courses in this pathway. And both of our schools, which I'll tell you where they are when we wrap up last, but both schools actually have information on animals and plants. So while our charter school focuses more on plants, they actually still have ducks and chickens and stuff that they take care of right there at the school, right? And our other pathway that focuses more on animal science, which they have such a fun classroom. They have a bunny and a snake and um, some other animals. I think they have a turtle, right? That are all in the classroom that the kids get to take care of. But they also have a greenhouse and this really great garden open outdoor space um, where they get to take care of plants as well. So in either program, you'll have hands-on experience learning about how we take care of and grow both plants and animals. Um, we do an introduction to agriculture, food and natural resources. There is a principles of ag science. At the charter school, we focus on plants. At the um, other school, we focus on animals. And then we talk about natural resources and ecology. Um, and there's actually a capstone course, which is like a really big word that talks about how you throw all this stuff that you've learned over several years together and figure out how we can use this information to move forward in the future. So next slide. So here is where our two programs are. Um, one is at Green Street Academy, which is the more plant-centered pathway. And the other one is at Reginald F. Lewis, which is the more animal-centered pathway. And in addition to all the great things you get to do in the classroom, um, Albert might wanna touch on some of the great experiences that our students have outside of the classroom because they get to go on some really cool trips. Absolutely. And good morning, everyone. Again, thank you so much for being here. 
Um, Albert Phillips Jr. worked based on a specialist and I'm fortunate to be able to work alongside Shanita and so many other people who are in this space, including our partners and our teachers to support our agriculture students. And as was mentioned, if you decide to get in agriculture, I honestly believe along with learning a ton of information, you're gonna have an exciting experience. Uh, we've been able to take our agriculture students on various field trips this school year, including to the Maryland Zoo, uh, Filbert Street Garden, uh, to learn about composting and beekeeping and um, animal husbandry. Um, and so we wanna continue to have these sorts of experiences. We envision our students being able to go to different colleges to learn about their agriculture programs. If, if students decide to go to college, let's say for instance, University of Maryland College Park or Eastern Shore, uh, they both have agriculture programs. So you can take what you've learned in high school and take it on to college, uh, obtain a degree and, and get into a career. And that should even mention, you know, there's a there's a plant focus and then there's also an animal focus. And so you'll have a, a, a great time learning about plants, um, how to care for plants, being in gardens, being in farms and things like that. But then you'll also have various experience experiences with animals, learning how animals are cared for, why, why are they important when we think about agriculture. So you're gonna have a wonderful time. Reginald F. Lewis High School and Green Street Academy. If you're in elementary or middle school and you're interested in agriculture, hopefully by the end of this event, we encourage you to you know, let your teachers, let your parents make some noise and let people know, hey, I wanna go to one of these schools so I can be a part of our agriculture program. So I just wanted to make sure I mentioned that to you all. Uh, and I'll let the, the show continue. Thank you. Okay, so let's get into the field. Um, so just remember our norms about being curious and asking questions in the chat, staying on mute. Please share your questions and stay engaged. We are very excited for the tour to come and here's where we're headed. We are gonna have our first stop at an agricultural classroom at Reginald F. Lewis High School. We'll be popping in there shortly. Then we'll be going at Great Kids Farm and we'll be ending with your questions and, um, and some resources that you can take advantage of. So let's go ahead and turn it over. Good morning. Reginald. Thank you, Barbara. Good morning, everybody. Where are you at? Tell us all about it. I'm at Reginald F. Lewis um, in the agri agriculture classroom, and I'm learning a lot already, having conversations with the students. I am the work-based learning specialist, also in the Office of College and Career Readiness. So bear with me. I, the reception is a little bit wonky here, but we have Mr. Beagle and his students, and they're going to talk to us about their classroom and Y'all are going to meet Shelly and Fawn. So I'm going to turn my camera around so you all can meet them. And we're going to ask them some questions. Don't forget to use your note catchers. Here we go. OK. This is Mr. Beagle. Good morning. How are you, everybody? Good. <laughs> <laughs> Class. His name is Jesus. It, it seems if I sit closer to the window, we have the best reception. Who else do we have here today? Josh. What's your name back there, young lady? Donye. And who's next to you, Jesus? It's two Joshes here, everybody. Josh one and. Okay, okay. So, Mr. Beagle, thanks for having us here. We're going to ask a few questions, but feel free to tell us anything you want us to know about agriculture in your classroom and the program here. So how does your classroom connect to the agriculture program? Um, so <clears throat> I teach four different classes. And so right now we're in our intro class. So this is everybody in our class's first year teaching agriculture. What um, grade? These are 10th graders. Okay. Um, so they have their kind of their ninth grade year to kind of pick which pathway they want. And the, these ones got lucky and picked agriculture. Nice. Um, and so we learn about food, uh, animals, clothing, natural resources, wow. um, different careers in the pathways, um, a, a whole bunch of different stuff. <laughs> okay. Okay. So what career and technical skills have any of the students learned 
this school year. This is your first year. Have you all learned anything special or you want to share with us some special projects you want us to know about? Oh, well, we don't have to dig holes. Dig holes? Plants, how they're supposed to grow, what they need for it to grow. Oh, this is can you enter? No, don't put it down. Don't put it down. Fawn is chubby. Is it is he gonna jump? Uh he probably would. Don't let him jump. Albert said for sure he will jump. Don't let it jump <laughs> here, please. <Yeah. laughs> but this is fine. Can you all tell me why Fawn is so special here? Because he was born. He, he was born here. Josh, he was what? He was born here? Oh, does anyone want to walk us through the poster and show us about Fawn's life cycle since he was born here at Reginald F. Lewis? Uh, he wasn't here. I wasn't here that long. He's six years old, so he was born in 2016. Um, so basically one of our students' senior capstone projects was she wanted to see if she could predict the outcome of breeding two rabbits. And so on Fawn's life cycle, um, up top is his mom and she was a mini lop, so she's white with brown spots. And then his dad was black and white and he's a mini Rex. Um, so his ears stand up, hers flop down. Um, so part of it was to see if the baby's ears were gonna stand up or flop down um, and also what color outcomes we could have. Um, and so she ended up having five babies, which are these in their nest right here. Um, and they had white with brown spots Spots, a black one, a gray one, a brown one, and then I think another one, but only two of them ended up like actually making it oh. because they had like some complications and stuff. Um, oh, but okay. we were able to keep two of them. Um, so Fawn, this is him as a baby, and that's his sister. Um, and then, so yeah, they were born in our classroom, and the students take care of them. Um, over the summer, I take them to my house, but then during the school year, um, Donye might sometimes clean the rabbit cage during class, or um, they learn about how to feed them, how to take care of them, what they need. Um, they clip his nails, all sorts of things. Oh, I can tell. <laughs> yeah. What does he eat? Um, he eats, they're like alfalfa pellets. It's just okay. like a standard rabbit feed, and then also hay. And then they like to bring in snacks for him, so they'll bring in apples, carrots, uh, um, um, you guys. He's also he's fish is for the, uh, term. Oh yeah, he's litter trained, and so when we have to clean it, all we really need to do is take out the litter box and then kind of like clean around it a little bit. Wow! So who trained him? The student that um he just kind of like learned on his own. We put the box in there and kind of like started putting his droppings in it, and then he learned. He's okay. very smart, just like our students. Okay. <laughs> so have any of you learned anything specifically from Karen for fun? <laughs> Danye said so the rabbits are very bougie. I can see that he's sitting right on her lap and being petted. Look, he's huge. Look at him. Are the animals here in class you want to talk about? So we have a yellow belly slider um, who is also a donation to our classroom in 2016. So this is Shelly, a yellow belly slider. Yes. And she sees that I'm here. So yeah, Josh can feed her some um, pellets. She's very, yeah, Donnie said she's very social. Oh, um, Donnie says she's very social and Josh is gonna feed her some pellets. Let's see what she does. Look, she's sticking her head out. She lives for food, so anytime she sees somebody walking pets, she will try to appease them to feed her. <laughs> and how old is she? Um, she's older than six. We've had her for six years. Okay. So maybe like seven or eight. So but she's definitely grown since she's been here. 
Okay. Um, I think when we got her, she was probably the size of this dish. These are actually, she laid eggs in the um, tank. Um, and so we kind of saved them, but they aren't really like able to be saved. Um, she doesn't have an email to fertilize them. So they just kind of get laid and then that's it. Oh, um, so when you save them, what are you going to do with them? I just wanted to save them to show the students. Oh. They don't really see turtle legs all the time. But oh. they started deflating. So that's why they're kind of a weird shape. But this is about how big they would be. So smaller than chicken eggs. Oh. But we don't use them for anything. They just, and how long ago did she lay those eggs? Um, that was probably a week ago or sometime last week, right? Oh, it's only been a week. Okay. And so if they're not fertilized and they won't, because there's no males, they won't be baby turtles. Right. So we were able to take them out and just kind of. So if it was a male turtle here and they, how long do they have to live after she lays them to be fertilized? Um, they get fertilized and then she lays them. Oh, okay. And so they're already, they would have already been ready to start their incubation period. Okay, what's the incubation period for turtle? I'm not sure, I've never actually looked it up. Chickens are 21 days. So a week, so probably maybe the same. Okay. Or similar. Would that be a cattle product for chickens at a male turtle or? Yeah, um, that might be a little bit more difficult. Rabbits are very easy to breed. Oh. <laughs> um, turtles might not give them the outcome. So we might have a year where they're trying to and trying and trying. Oh. And they might not actually be successful. Okay. Look, Shelly likes me. They said she's very social. So um what if you're interested in agriculture, what are the post-secondary options? Is it college? Can you enter careers directly into agriculture after graduation from high school? Yep. Yeah. So they can either start college or a career or a trade school, um, depending what industry in agriculture they want to go into. Um, some of the students want to be veterinarians, so they'll obviously have to go to college. Um, but then also, see. Diane wants to be a veterinarian. That's why she's still holding fawn over there and caring for her. Him, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Him. Um, but if they go into, um, like, truck driving is uh, agricultural that you might just be able to be trained or go to a trade school. Um, it just depends what their interest is. So how did you end up teaching in agriculture? Um, so when I was growing up in Howard County, um, we didn't actually have agriculture in our school system. And so, and they actually still do not in Howard County schools. Um, but I was in the 4-H program where I showed uh, pigs and cows and sheep and chickens and good, like a whole, slew of animals at the Howard County Fair. Um, so I was in 4-H and so I was always interested in raising animals and uh, taking care of the garden and that kind of thing. Um, and then so I initially went to college to be a veterinarian but then I decided it was too much school like too intricate um, and so then I went and got my master's. I worked in uh, research for a little while um, and then I realized that people in high school actually can take agriculture as a course. Um, and so I got excited about it and now I'm here. <laughs> awesome. So Miss Singletary's class, I think we kind of touched on this, but she said, is a degree in agriculture needed for a job in the field? And is that path in that pathway, do you have to do a lot of math? Um, so it also just depends what, uh, what, like how you, or not how, where you want to take agriculture with what you're interested in. Um, so you can be in agriculture basically in any degree in college. So um, if you want to take food science, that is agricultural. If you want to do clothing design, if you want to do animal science, my major was animal science um, at Maryland. And so it wasn't directly agriculture as mm -hmm. a major, um, but it was related to the field. Um, so it's so broad anyway, that you could relate it in any different way that you're interested in. Even if you're doing um, like sports science or groundskeeping um, at the Orioles Stadium or yeah, yeah. the Raven Stadium, all agriculture. Wow, okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Beagle. Does any of the students have anything else they wanna say? No? Do you like the class? Are you enjoying your class? These are it varies. Middle schools. Middle schools. Pay attention to school. Make sure you do go to seventh and eighth grade or over your head. And just school or something else like that. Animals are better than people.
And that's it. Diane said animals are better than people. Okay, well, thank you, Mr. Beagle. Um, is the garden here? Yep, um, outside. We have a whole courtyard. So oh, sure. They're going to show us the garden really quick. It's our last hoorah. We didn't know you all had a garden. Yeah, we have our whole greenhouse. Oh, it's the greenhouse. Whole, like building right here is our greenhouse. Um, and so this year we were kind of working to like clean it up and spruce it up a little bit because of um, COVID. We, it's all completely overgrown. Um, so we have three different levels that the students can pick and choose uh, which plants we put in it. Um, we are a certified butterfly garden, so we have to make sure that you can see the like, uh, pizza, uh, not turtles, but there's, um, and then there's a bunch of different um, like mulberry trees along here. We had some uh, uh, tulips and mint plants. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. And this is the certified butterfly garden. All right, this is a great way to close the Zoom, Mr. Beagle. Yeah, we have a whole bunch of different bird species that come out. Um, we have like morning dove families that live out in the trees and that kind of thing. So it's kind of cool to be able to see it during class just from our classroom window. Do you have a work out here? Yeah, uh, when it's nice out, I try to get them outside and do. Um, they don't really do as much, but the later classes, um, like animal science comes out here a lot. And we have a biotechnology course and a capstone course. Okay. So our capstone course is our seniors doing like an end of the year project. And so their projects, it's way overgrown, but they were trying to pick and choose what we wanted to keep and get rid of um, in the garden to be able to be used for the different uh, classes. And we got these brand new picnic tables that people can come out and use in their classes to kind of do an intercurricular um, experiences. Wonderful. Thank you all so much, Josh, Don Gay, Jesus, Fawn. You all have been amazing hosting us today. We appreciate you letting us come out. All right. So I'm going to hand it back to Barbara, who will take us to stop two. Thank you, students and um, Mr. Beagle. Awesome. Thank you so much for that tour. I'm jealous of the garden. Um, I'm jealous of the creatures, my kids. I have 11 year old twins and we live in a rural home in Baltimore, like many of you out there probably. And they are desperate for chickens. And they're like, we're zoned for chickens. Why do we have chickens behind our house? And I'm like, cause your dad doesn't want them. So anyway, I throw my, I throw my husband under the bus when he, they ask about chickens. So I have a question for the chat as we're transitioning. If you had a chicken, what would you name it? I would like to know the names that you would oh, offer to me. those chickens if you had the chickens. That is my curiosity. Um, I think I would name it something like Dolly Parton or something like that, you know, something like way over the top and dramatic and diva E. Um, all right, so we are going to move to our next stop. Blackberry, I love that suggestion. That's I love a great it. Name for a chicken. Um, we're going to kick it to Adenike for our next stop. So we're excited. Can you see like, the chickens, Barbara? I can see them. I'm so excited. What are their names? Tell me one more time. That the fifth well. graders who named them named them Bob and Ross. Bob and Ross. <laughs> Any students who visit can name them whatever names they want. Awesome. So I am here from the amazing Great Kids Farm, and I have Miss L with me. Hi, Miss L. Hi, everyone. And Mr. James, Hello. and a soon-to-be graduate. Tell me your name. I'm Justin. Hello. Justin, nice to meet you. So you guys, I'm going to really turn it over to you, and I'm just going to be the videographer. So lead us on this tour. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ms. L, and I am one of your farm-to-school specialists. So that is a very fun job at a farm where I get to teach everybody about our farm and all the food that we eat that comes from farms because almost everything you eat comes from a farm, even if it's not ours. And we get to teach them all about how we raise the animals and raise the plants here at Great Kids Farm. I also get to work a lot with all the different schools. So I get to go to all the different schools in the city and bring them materials from our farm and do programs with them. And the chicks that you saw right here were raised by some fifth graders at one of the schools I work with, which was Tunbridge um, Public Charter School. 
and they raised them from when they were inside their eggs. We gave them eggs from our farm and they waited three whole weeks with the eggs in a warmer called an incubator. And after three weeks, these two chicks used their little beaks and they pecked their way out. Also, we raised um, some chicks here at our farm as well. And can I actually show you to yeah. the incubator? So if you come back here. Oh my goodness. We have an incubator and you can see the shell. These are actually turkey eggs. And you can wow. see the shell here that a turkey hatched from just this morning. Oh my goodness. So we're gonna go take a look at the baby turkey and I'll get to teach you some of the things that I teach other students when they come and visit us. Let's see if we can find her or him here in the corner. We don't know if it's male or female yet. You can't tell with baby birds like this. This is our newest little friend. Oh my goodness. We're being really, really gentle with it. It doesn't have a name yet. So any students watching, maybe you'll name our little turkey friend. And some of the things that we teach about our animals are how we take care of them, like giving them water. You can see there we've got their water and giving them food and making sure they're warm and safe. So this is called a brooder and it's actually plugged into the electricity and it has heat that keeps them warm and makes them feel safe at night. So Ryan named the baby turkey Bob. Love it. Love it, love <laughs> it. And then we also teach them things about how we can make observations about the animals to understand them better. So we know this is a bird because it has a beak, because it has feathers. If I really carefully hold it out, we'll be able to see its little baby wings. Aww. And birds have wings because they can fly, even if like turkeys or chickens, they don't fly very far. And we might also notice that birds have two feet. So there's one of its little feet. <laughs> and those are some things that make birds birds. And that makes chicken chickens and turkeys turkeys. And that makes them different from animals like us, like humans or animals like goats or cows or pigs. And it's really important when we're learning about farms to understand all of those things about our animals. And one of the last things that we teach people is all about the food that we can get from animals. So this little turkey here is probably gonna grow up into a big turkey. That we won't eat, <laughs> that we'll pardon. We we'll pardon, we'll pardon, we'll pardon the turkey. We don't, eat, we don't generally eat the turkeys at our farm. Um, and if it's a female turkey, those actually aren't usually the ones you would eat anyway. For a female turkey, you keep them to lay eggs to make new turkey chicks or because you can actually eat eggs. So you can eat turkey eggs the same way that. you can eat chicken eggs. I did not know that. Um, and we raise, we have a flock of what, about 30 or so chickens mm -hmm. um, and some new chickens that were raised by Cecil Elementary first graders as well. And they're all egg laying chickens. Um, so they lay eggs, not to raise baby chicks from, but so that we can take those eggs and donate them to the high school culinary programs, which is the high school cooking programs or give them away to volunteers and classes and staff. Um, so that people can eat eggs. And that helps teach us all about how farms actually are raising the food that we eat. And so for any students out there, if you can put it in the chat, maybe you like to eat eggs, who likes to eat eggs? So one of the questions we got is, how does a turkey egg taste different than a chicken egg? I think they taste almost pretty much the same, just a little bit richer and denser. What do you think, James? Not spot. Yeah. Yeah, the yolk's a little bit bigger, but I mean, as far as taste wise, it's very, very similar. Very similar. The egg, yeah. the eggs look bigger too. They're bigger. A bigger animals usually make a bigger egg. Usually how big the is bigger, an ostrich egg? The bigger the bird, the bigger the egg. Uh, how I don't know how big an ostrich they're egg. Is. They're like huge, right? <laughs> and emu eggs, I think, are the largest bird eggs in the world. Wow. Uh, so, how does this replicate their natural habitat? So, it is very important for chickens and turkeys to scratch. They like to eat things off the ground. So you can see we put their food down really low and you can see all these places where they've actually scratched around, whether it's looking for food or looking for a place to actually take a bath in the dust. Mm. The other thing we've done is add all of these sticks and branches because birds like to sit on branches. And even though chickens live on farms, they originally came from the wild and they would roost, which means um, hang out or go to sleep up in the trees at night for protection. Wow. So now they're protected inside of our barn at night. 
but we still give them branches to sleep on because they actually sleep standing up on the branch with their eyes closed, just like that. And they don't fall over. That's perfect. <laughs> um, what type of chickens are they? Are they? It's one of the questions that came in. So they are a mixed breed of chicken and our farm manager, James, could tell you a little more about that. Yeah, we, um, the rooster that we had, I'm not even sure what breed that is, we have a whole mix of, of all different kinds. We have Americanos, Bard Rocks, and Rhode Island Reds. Um, these two, I have no clue. They might be more, but we have some Marins, um, but them looking a little darker, they might have some of that in them, the Black Copper Marin, but even still, it's, they're just kind of a, a mix. The turkey is a bourbon red. It's a heritage breed, and both of its parents are bourbon red, so that's a true um, bourbon red turkey right there. So another question we got from the chat is, what is the lifespan of a chicken or a turkey? Like, how long do they live for? Um, they live between three and five years, at least for chickens. I think it's about the same for turkeys. Is that right? They're a little longer. A little longer. Uh, I mean, especially if, if we're giving them everything they need in protection, food, and water, they can last a good bit. Um, I mean, if we, yeah, we have the turkey here. He was born in the spring of 2017 and he's still hanging on like oh, five wow. years now. Wow. So I think they might be closer to eight, 10 years. I um, call him our great, 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 great yeah. grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> Or excuse me, turkey. He's got his long turkey beard in the front. Aww. And all of these different breeds of chickens also can lay different color eggs. They taste the same. They look the same on the inside, but on the outside, they might be different colors and shapes. And that's a question a lot of people ask, you know, is a brown egg healthier? Is there a difference between a brown egg and a white egg? And just like we can have different skin colors and be different on the outside, those eggs are all the same on the inside. inside. I love that. And the human comparison to that. So thank you. And um, at this point, I'm going to actually turn you right over to um, James and perhaps Justin as well to head over to the greenhouse. And we're going to get ready for our field trip this morning. Thank you. So if the school wanted to get a, an egg or chicken or come to Great Kids Farm, what, what is the way to do that? Um, they should email us at farms at bcps.k12.mv.us. <laughs> so that's farms, just F-A-R-M-S. And we can give them all that information or they can look up the Friends of Great Kids Farm website or the Farm to School page on Baltimore City Schools. And they'll have all our links and information there. Awesome, thank you so much, Miss L. Okay, so Bye. we're gonna follow you guys now into this beautiful weather. Oh my goodness. <laughs> And so how many schools do you like have um, during the school year? Come visit you guys. Oh, that's great. Laura, how many schools do they have? Do you know the number off the top of your head? Yeah, I can tell you the number of students. Number, all right, how about that number um, of students? Have, um, say hi first. Say hi, hi to the students of Baltimore City hi, Public everyone. School. Hi, <laughs> everyone. I'm Laura Tonello with Great Kids Farm. Um, I think we've had around 2,500 students visit wow. so far on field trips. Wow, that's so and awesome. Great and I know you have one coming any second yes. now. So. Yes, so I got to run. But okay, nice thank you. you. <laughs> but yeah, we're set up where we have three field trips a week. Um, and then we do in-school programming on other days. Um, and what does in-school programming look like? Because you actually go out to the schools for yeah, that, Yeah, so right? we'll do, um, there's a couple, we'll have a kind of a menu of options that we can do. Um, some's a cooking program in class, so they'll, they'll head out, bring a bunch of cooking supplies and, and tools and stuff, and then do a cooking demonstration in the room. Nice. Um, some will be a planting, um, whether it's like with a class or out in school garden. And then the one other thing that we do is we'll bring the animals to a school. So I'll load up the truck with some goats, chicken. And Are we going to see goats today? We can go down the goats. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> well, absolutely. We'll come visit the goats. But we'll do that. We'll talk about um, healthy eating, why we need to eat healthy, why our animals need to eat healthy, and then give the kids a chance to kind of pet and feed some animals. Awesome. So that one's um, a really popular one that we do at least once a week. And so Justin, tell me about your experience with Great Kids Farm. Uh, there's some other interns who have been here longer, but I started here last summer um, and I absolutely loved it. Um, it was just real nice to be out in an open environment, like a natural space. And I did some planting. I got to interact with the animals, the goats. Uh, they're very cute. Um, I got to drive a tractor and it just- You got to drive a tractor? I, I love that. <laughs> it was really fun. I only crashed it once. Also, oh, you didn't crash it. <laughs> I knocked down a telephone pole. <laughs> no, but nobody got hurt. You didn't no get one hurt. Got hurt. Okay. Um, what high school do you go to? I go to Poly. Nice. Um, and I'm graduating uh, on the 12th. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I'm actually, uh, the program is usually not for seniors, but I asked and they let me come back because I like yeah. it so much. 
So yeah, I'm happy to be here. And so how would, how do you feel like this experience has helped you with like school, like staying engaged with your academics and stuff like that? Um, not so much about that, but it definitely uh, kind of guided where I wanted to go for college, uh, which is, I know I want to major in environmental science uh, and then maybe go somewhere in this direction. That is so awesome. Thank you. Okay, so back to you. <laughs> uh, so we're, <laughs> we're back in the greenhouse here. This is amazing. And um, the nice part about our greenhouse is it's heated so we can grow things here year round. Um, on some of the side benches, you can, I don't know if you can see that far, but there's passion fruit vines and some passion fruit on it, which is something Can we go that, look? I've never oh, seen yeah, passion fruit with, except for my grocery store. <laughs> so they, they start out, as, I don't know if I can find any flowers. They have really cool flowers. That is amazing. And they produce amazing. these green fruits and then they'll ripen dark purple. Um, but this is something that we would never be able to grow outside in Maryland, but within our heated greenhouse, we can do that. And you can grow all year long. All year round, yeah. Yeah, and that's where I really like because we can do, we have some lemons, um, we have, this is actually a coffee plant. I love coffee. Which, uh, this year, it's, it had some flowers. I don't know if it's going to produce any of the beans, but um, it's, it's in here trying. These are like mini banana trees. Have you gotten any bananas from No, there? I don't know if it will fruit anything, but they're still kind of cool plants. It might, they're like supposed to be like little mini bananas. I don't know if that will ever happen, but we're giving it a shot. They're like three years old now, I think. Um, but the passion fruit's been the one that actually kind of fruits. That's pretty exciting. That's awesome. Um, so it's cool in here that we can do things and grow stuff year round that we otherwise wouldn't be able to do. We start all of our seeds for the, for the, um, spring and summer in the greenhouse so anytime you walk in the greenhouse throughout the year it's gonna look totally different in the spring it's all covered in trays with little seedlings in the summer it's kind of got as little as possible because we can be growing stuff outside and this greenhouse gets super hot um, and then in the winter we'll have some plants overwintering and it's kind of fun because the balance of you always want to keep the right amount of heat in the winter you keep it tight the heaters come on and it'll like with the sun being down through the glass it'll keep it really warm and the spring and fall is nice because it's tricky too, but in the days it gets really hot, but at nights it gets cool. So you have to kind of adjust the vents and windows. And in the summer, you want everything to be just wide open, wide open. and have the fans going because it gets so hot in here. You want to kind of keep it at a kind of more milder temperature than So gets. how many people does it take to run this farm? Because that sounds really labor intensive. <laughs> it is, it is. So I'm the, I'm the farm manager here and I kind of oversee all the plants, animals, um, buildings and kind of landscaping spaces um but we do have a team of uh six now eight uh or maybe even ten summer interns um high school interns and we have a lot of volunteers throughout the year we have a lot of other people coming around through the year so there's always kind of people coming around helping out but our core group of people in the summer is our high school interns and they um they provide a you know, tremendous amount of help and we just you know get so much done and they're such great kids and it's just a really good experience awesome um, so how did you get on this career? How, how did this become your passion? I, I, I can tell yeah. that you're passionate about it. So this, There's no way you can do this without being passionate about so this, it. So how did you get yeah, here? Here's my kind of story in brief. Um, I used to be a high school social studies teacher um, in Indiana. And then when I was doing that, my wife, um, she's a large animal veterinarian. She comes from a farming background. And um, when I'm meeting her, I kind of really started getting interested in those things. So when I was teaching, I had an aquaponics set up in my one uh, closet or our one like little room aside from our room. And that's growing with water, right? Yeah, it's growing. And we mm -hmm. raised tilapia and had plants on top. Right. And then we um, kind of with a group of students then we built um, our courtyard gardens and grew vegetables and we'd, you know, bring them into the cafeteria for salads. And then the scraps from the cafeteria we'd bring and we'd have composting worms in the other room. So I really was, I loved doing that but I was still teaching like social studies full time, you know, and then that kind of was always on the side. So when we moved, I was like, hmm, where can I find something that would be, you know, still educational, but also with agriculture and science. And it was just pure luck almost that stumbled upon Great Kids Farm. Um, and then the farm manager position was open and, and got that. And it's been really, I mean, this is as perfect as it gets for me. Because I love be, it. <laughs> you know, outside doing all these things with plants, animals, and but still get to work with students and still get to be involved with, you know, teaching and education because that's 
that's what I love. I love, I love when passions align, right? Yeah, and we can do that's it. Perfect. Thank you so much. So where are we going to go next? You want to go check out the goats? If, I was, is the Wi-Fi going to be okay? I, it's supposed to be. Okay. We, we can to, try it. it. World. Okay. Yeah. Now, just head back down. Okay. Thank you. So we're going to do one more stop and see if we can see some goats. Uh, what other livestock do you have? We just have all, uh, goats, chickens, and turkeys. Okay. So we talked about it all so far. It's a good mix. One of the challenges, especially with with our space and with any of the spaces like in the school district is that, you know, we're on a school year calendar and we have a school year like school schedule. So, you know, we got to make sure that these animals that need 24 seven attention can get 24 seven mm -hmm. attention. And, and so what's all this vegetation here? All right, yeah, so we have, so our left here is our pollinator garden and there's a mix of um, all different kind of native pollinator species that will flower throughout the summer and always kind of giving a good habitat for for pollinators, um, like bees and bees, stuff like that, yeah, and okay. flies and butterflies, and and, and why it, are they important? So you want pollinators to go, especially for your um your fruiting vegetables, tomatoes, peppers, because that's what's going to produce more and more fruit. Um, so you want a healthy mix of pollinators to give you more and more uh, fruit production. Awesome. And some things can be pollinated by themselves with the wind. Um, or animals or things brushing against it, but some pollinators like bees and stuff will travel from flower to flower and help pollinate each individual flower. And to the right, we have our grapevines and they're um, very early in the season. They've got a lot of their greenery and right here is their little grapes that, that in August, they'll be full full size, nice, sweet Concord grapes. So do you make, oh, you don't make wine with no, Concord grapes. No, we're not, we're not wine. We haven't really had enough harvest yet they're still pretty early like young um young vines one of these years we definitely once we have enough we want to make like jelly or something i mean wine would be hard right, but that's not for sure no <laughs> <laughs> oh i hear them so here's all of our this is our poultry yard and we have all the adult birds is so that is that the grandfather turkey right the grandfather there turkey. oh my goodness that's kind of scary yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness, he's huge. <laughs> and then, yeah, so we have the turkeys and the chickens and this is their space. Normally they go out and about this whole yard. We've been having a little issue with foxes lately. So just put up an electric fence to sort of hopefully keep them from creeping in the backside. When we have field trips and you know we're out and about during the day, we don't really have much of an issue with fox, but sometimes if it's a quiet day, they get a little bit more bold. Yeah, the facts, foxes in my backyard are really bold right now. That's terrible. So the last stop is the goat? Yeah, we'll go out through the barn and go check out the goats. Okay. And so what's the busiest time of year? Oh, certainly spring. April, April, May. Everything is, you know, we got constantly starting seeds, constantly planting out. All the animals kind of are you know, getting back out where in the winter they kind of just kind of hunker down and it's easy, but then they start, you know, needing a little bit more attention. Um, the field trips are like, you know, full blast. We have events going on. We just have basically spring, yeah. spring, spring, spring. And then kind of later in the, in the fall, um, when the school starts again and field trips start again, and then we have kind of a harvest window and some events in the fall. Um, those are usually the, by far the busiest. Winter's nice. It's kind of a nice little lull there. Um, and summer's, summer's just normal. It's pretty much just stable. It's kind of like everything's pretty predictable. Go Tease, come on. Um, one of the questions is how can people volu volunteer? Yes, uh, I think Elle sent out that email. Yeah, that's address. true. Yeah, mm -hmm. just reach out to that email address. Um, Elle does a lot of, uh, does all the volunteer coordination. Um, we have some specific, you know, if people, we have, groups of volunteers that come out on like maybe one day and we also have um you know a group of volunteers that will come out on a regular basis that either assist with some of the outdoor work some of the uh field trip stuff Here they come. come on goatees go on so even though i wanted to see the goats i want to tell you that i don't have good, ex a good experience with goats. Oh. but i know the kids will like it so. they're sweet they're good so here they come come on 
they just respond to your voice well they think i have something and then they <laughs> they just kind of are curious and then once one goes they're all gonna they're follow. all gonna follow yeah. and then oh you have so many yeah there's 14 of them they're all uh very small most of them are nigerian dwarfs uh there's a couple that are a mix but yeah they um they're sweet they're about I'm, and they eat anything they'll yeah they i mean their preference is like kind of brush and bramble and like, um kind of like uh shrubby stuff mm -hmm. but they do okay on grass here they come oh my goodness but yeah and that's the thing we often think they like will eat anything like garbage um but they they are a little bit pickier and they could you know i don't ever really want people feeding them anything unless it's something that's found that's found out here okay because then they um they can get upset stomachs and they can have some issues from that that's too. true so one of the questions is do the foxes bother the goats no they don't seem to mind at all they'll be there'll be foxes trotting through the pasture and the goats and they don't do thing and they and don't they, bother them no, they that's so anything. interesting here they are oh my goodness that is so adorable so yeah i mean they're about i don't know some are only probably 20 25 pounds of 40 pounds they're small about the size of a small dog, um, but they're so good. They're so sweet. Um, they really like, some of them really, really like attention. Um, but yeah, we've been bringing them to school so they get used to um, kids and, and um, you know. You can tell they're well behaved because my goat jumps on me. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so I think we're gonna end here. So do you guys, what, how do you guys wanna end this and wish everyone a great summer? Um, yeah from Great Kids Farm. Yeah, have a great summer. We're um, James and Justin from Great Kids Farm and reach out whenever you got questions or if you're ever interested in anything, we're happy to kind of help and support and be there for, for the district in any way we can. Awesome, so one more question. Are the horned goats the male goats? That's a great question. No, they're, um, some are male, some are female. The father, the buck of most of these goats, he had no horns and all the moms did have horns. It's just a genetic trait. So this is little Moo, he's a boy, and this is his twin sister, May, and she Aww. has horns. Um, so it's just a, just a genetic trait that if they don't have horns, they're called pulled, um, just a pulled goat. And some, some farmers and some people really like when they don't have horns, and because it's just, they think the horns are a little bit dangerous. I like the horns, because then you, if you ever need to you can like, pull them. them <laughs> and um, it's easy if you have to like give them medicine or check them, uh, you can kind of just hold them. No, you can tell that they love you. Thank you so much, Guy. Thank you for all you do. Um, and I'm going to shoot it back over to the team. Thank you so much. Thank Have a great everyone. summer, everyone. <laughs> oh my gosh, so awesome. I love goats. And if I had goats, uh, they would be the greatest of all time. And I just stopped, named them after the things that were the greatest of all time. So like pizza, because it's the greatest food of all time. Um, Jackie Robinson, you know, like I would just, that would be the theme. So thank you so much, Adam McKay. I need to get out to Great Kids Farm. I've not been out there and I'm super jealous. That brings us to the end of our time together. I am going to share my screen once again. And um, thank everybody for joining us. We do have some upcoming opportunities that I'd like to highlight. Um, if, so if you've been with us through 2021, 2022, we are shaping our 22, 23 calendar. And there's an end of year survey where we would like to know what did you like? What did you want? What did you want more of? Um, so, that's going to be shared in the chat. We would really love for our students and our teachers and our partners to tell us how they would like to partner with us in the year to come. And then, so exciting, if you are a middle schooler or if you know a middle schooler, we have an amazing um, summer career exploration camp that's free and hosted by our team. So if you have loved coming on these journeys with us in a virtual way, you could do it in person and you could learn about all these amazing careers. So the link for that, I believe is also going in the chat right now. So those are opportunities. If you have questions about those, please reach out to our team. You can email Albert, you can put something in the chat. You can email any of us. We would love to see you this summer and let you explore in person what you've been seeing virtually. And that's it. Thank you all for our time together. 
Team, anybody else? I just want to thank our partners at Great Kids Farm. I want to thank Reginald F. Lewis. I want to thank Albert and Shanita for putting this together. I want to thank Shamira and Adenik Gay for being out in the field. And all of the behind the scenes person. Bye. Oh, thank you, schools. Have a wonderful, wonderful summer. Stay safe, stay cool, stay curious. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.